Okay, everyone, I think we're gonna start. Uh, so uh, it is my, I will tell everyone I did get a gavel tonight for my for my uh, role tonight as the uh, facilitator in the start of the meeting. I asked Zadie, my little one, uh, she said, yes, I could use it for tonight. So it is my humble honor, uh, duty and privilege to call the school board meeting uh, for the Washington Central Uni Unified Union School District to order uh, tonight. So uh, before we uh, get into the uh, first uh, night's uh, uh, business, I just want to let everyone know that we're doing something a little different tonight. Uh, and I, I'll, Jim, if you just want to touch, talk real quick about uh, the new piece of uh, for our Zoom meetings. Thank you, Brian. Um, just to let um, the board and the public know, um, uh, in all of our Zoom meetings, um, we, um, you know, for benefit of the public and for the board and for transcription, uh, we do record in the cloud all the meetings. We do make them publicly accessible uh, to members of the public. One of the things in keeping with um, ADA compliance rules and at Brian's direction and the board's direction, one of the new features that you'll be seeing starting tonight is the live transcription feature. And so at the bottom of your screen, um, you'll be able to either look at a live transcript of this session as we go through it, or alternatively, on the right-hand side of your screen, you can look back at the entire transcript um, you know, throughout, the, throughout the meeting. And so um, we wanted to you know, just, just make everyone aware of, of, of what that is and why it's there. And, uh, you know, just a couple of, of, of pieces about live transcription. It is an auto transcription feature through Zoom. Uh, it has its limitations. Automated speech recognition doesn't always perfectly understand what a speaker is saying. So background noise, speaking very quickly like I'm doing right now, using technical words, which is also a, a, a um, you know, a flaw of mine, and proper names can all impact transcription accuracy. Um, it's certainly going to be better than your phone's voice to text function, but our hope is is that the combination of the voice um, the, the voice engine and, and the and the voice recording that we get, which is a separate engine from the transcription engine, the two of those combined will ensure that we capture everything that we need from a public's perspective. And our goal is to maintain, you know, and come into compliance from an ADA perspective. So, Brian, thank you for leading that effort and uh, the board, I appreciate, you know, you all leading that effort as well. Um, as we go through this, if we find over time that the transcription is not working properly, at our discretion, we have the ability to, you know, hire a transcriptionist who can transcribe this and you, you'd see that transcription live. But for now, we thought that the auto transcription service would, would serve our needs and, uh, you know, we can look to change that at any time. So to the board and to Brian, thank you. Uh, Brian, I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Thank you, Jim. Uh... So, uh, so we do have a little uh, change with our Zoom, and I think it's a, a great upgrade uh, for members in our public. Uh, the big thing tonight is our board reorganization. Uh, I I do know uh, I believe everyone is here. I don't I did not see Chris McVeigh here, uh, but uh, I maybe he just uh, tapped in right now. But I think everyone is here. Just so everyone knows, uh, the five board members that were up for re-election. Uh, I'll talk more about this in the articles later on when I talk about the articles, but I do want to let everyone know that they were uh, re-elected and I'll talk more about that. There were two additional folks uh, that appear to have qualified as well. I have yet to receive their oaths. Uh, of, uh, I have not seen, received any signed oaths. So I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to uh, participate as board members. I do see uh, them tonight, but I do not believe they will be able to participate uh, as I'm not, I'm not in receipt and my office is not in receipt uh, of the um, uh, oaths. Okay. So uh, first thing is, Chris, as, Chris, yes. Can you, can you, it's Chris, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you, Chris. I'm glad okay. you're here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, and uh, I just want to remind everyone uh, that there is a new school board member toolkit at uh, on the VSBA website. Uh, I will be able to share that with the board. Uh, and if and when I receive the oaths from the two new board members, I will be more than happy to share that with the uh, new board members as well. So um, that being said, I've called the meeting to order. We have elections tonight. It is a big uh, reorganization meeting tonight for the board. 
And the first uh, responsibility we, we have is uh, to elect a board chairperson to serve uh, the year uh, from today until basically next year at this time. So um, at this point, I'm taking any nominations. Hold or... on, Brian. Yes. Sorry, you mm -hmm. skipped agenda revisions. Did I read that wrong? Doesn't that come first? No, the board organization reorg comes first and uh, we do the agenda revisions afterwards. Okay, our... sorry. No worries. <laughs> so uh, basically uh, taking any nominations for the board chairperson. Oh, I see Dorothy with her hand raised. Dorothy. Okay. Um, I'd like to nominate Scott Thompson to help herd us cats for another year. He's done a nice, even job. I'd like to keep him there. Thank you, uh, Dorothy. I have Scott Thompson as one person to be nominated for the board chair. Do I have anyone else? Hi, Brian, do you see me? Yes, I see you now, Jonas. Thank you. I nominate Floor Diaz-Smith. Floor Diaz-Smith has been nominated for board chair. Do we have anyone else for nominations? I'm looking at everyone going once, twice. Okay, uh, Scott Thompson, quick question for you. Do you uh, accept the nomination to be considered? I do, yes, do. thank you, Brian. Thank you, and Floor, Diaz, Floor, do you have a, do you accept the nomination to be considered for tonight? Yes, Brian, I accept the nomination. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So um, I believe we vote for each candidate. Is that the way it works? Um, I'm just trying to make Can sure we, say we do something? this. Can, yeah. Do we get discussion first? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, discussion. <laughs> Thanks. So I have something if you're calling on me. Yes, Carolyn. Uh, so I support Floor as board chair. Uh, her experience as a board member, as well as the several committees she's joined, make her uniquely qualified to lead us. Most notably, her kindness and priority of hearing all voices will make her facilitation of our meetings ideal for everyone. I think her leadership is essential in accomplishing our goals for this year. Um, Melinda Gates said, school's main purpose is to open people's mind, uh, sorry, minds. And at each meeting, Floor presses us to question what we think we know and opens our minds on a regular basis. So I'm supporting Floor. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Do we have anyone else uh, that would like to speak? I'm trying to look at uh, who's anyone. Uh, Diane. Um, so, you know, to me, it's a win-win situation. Um, but I, I wonder about, and is if, whether or not it's appropriate, just to hear from both Scott and Floor um, what excites them about being in the role. Great, great. Would, uh, who would like to go first, Scott or Floor? Uh, Floor, please, if you wish. It, Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll go first, but you've been chair, so why don't you go first and I'll go second. <laughs> Thank you, dear Alphonse. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I guess I'm the devil you know, and um, you know my strengths, you know my weaknesses, which are legion. Um, whether I'm the devil that you still want or feel that you need, is something that um, I look forward to the board deciding. Um, it, it's been a privilege to me to be able to have chaired this board for these um, basically the better part of, of two years. Um, it, it will be an honor to be able to continue to serve um, or, a, or a relief not to, but um, there are a number of things, I guess, to to answer you, Diane, about what um, excites me. Um, usually, the ending of a board meeting is probably um, very exciting. But um, seriously, 
I, I think we're in a very interesting and sensitive phase of our um, <clears throat> of our history as a school district. Uh, I think there's tremendous promise for um, making real advances in education for our children. Um, I think we have all the ingredients for it. My, I guess, um, my one uh, sort of concern is that we're still, uh, our, our adaptation to being a consolidated district is still um, incomplete. And we will, I think, be having to um, confront the incompleteness of this in a number of in a number of areas, including probably a couple even this evening, um, including evaluation and um, uh, in other board operations. But um, <clears throat> I think we have the potential to truly be great and. Uh, always, um, I get by with a lot of help from my friends. Um, in this case, all of you, um, if you'll forgive me for you for considering you as such, um, and I would intend to um, to continue inviting maximum participation and maximum support and maximum contribution from um, from all of you to make you know, something bigger than the sum of our parts. So, sorry. So, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm honored to serve as, as chair. It's been an honor to serve as a, a vice chair, so I'd be happy uh, either way, but I, I do feel that, uh, I, that we're ready to move in the next direction. And I think that Scott has uh, has done a great job this this past year, uh, helping us through the through the pandemic. And I think that we are now have have passed that uh, that that threshold, and now we're ready to concentrate in 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 board governance, in in aligning all our goals, so that we can continue to 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 monitor and concentrate on uh, results for our kids. I think what what I would bring as a chair, what excites me about being the chair is that if I have a lot of, of history in the district and I understand the different communities and I'm good about trying to build on the strengths of each of us on the board and finding sort of similar you know, how we presented the, the budget, right? Like giving a voice to everybody so that we know, so we all feel like we're contributing and moving in towards uh, the same goals uh, all together for the best of and you know my my main interest is always what's best for kids and i think i don't have a lot to say you guys have seen me operate for the past it you know for the past three years as we organized uh, through act 46 and through my service in east montpelier i i wear a couple of other hats but they all align tremendously which what is best for kids not just in our district or in our state so it would be an honor to continue to serve uh, uh, our our board and help us create that uh, equity from the boardroom to the classroom. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Is there, uh, uh, do you have any other questions, Diane? I know you would ask that. Nope, looks like you're good. Are there any additional uh, folks that would like to, any board members that would like to uh, ask uh, questions or discuss that I can call upon? Okay, uh, so do we do, typically do a, a, a roll call vote or do we do a, a, an individual vote? A, a, how would we prefer to do this this time? Jonas. Brian, I would suggest that you ask people to click their yes buttons for one candidate and then ask people to click their yes buttons for a second candidate. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I will uh, ask uh, the, the board members to first, uh, we will first uh, go with Scott Thompson. Uh, if you please place your, if you're, if you wish Scott to uh, be the board chair for the next year, if you can please click your yes buttons. And Brian, I'm going to vote for Scott. This is Chris. All right. Thank you, Chris. 
Thank you. If you, I'm looking at the yes, but they're they're popping up and going going away real quick, so I can't necessarily see this here. I'm sorry, so guys. What I'm, happened last time, time was raising the hand. Well, we so can if they raise the hand, it'll stay. We can, the blue we can hand. Use the hand up on the on that reaction one. We can use the hand up for yes. One, two, three. Just keep your hand up and just counting here. Looks like I have five votes for Scott. All right. Jonathan, Scott. Okay, they're going down. All right. And uh, now I will ask uh, the board members. Uh, if please vote yes if you like uh, floor to serve as board chair. And it appears that we have uh, seven members voting yes for. Floor. So uh, I would uh, say that at this point, congratulations, Floor. Uh, you have been elected as the board chair. I would uh, normally hand uh, uh, my, uh, and also uh, just would like to uh, thank uh, Scott for his service as board chair. And what, if I had, could, Floor, I would hand you the gavel, but I do not have the gavel. So um, I'll pretend that I'm driving it. Thank you, thank you, Brian. Scott? Floor, if I might be the second one after Brian to offer my congratulations and also my complete support, anything that you need, um, please just ask. Thank you, Scott. I really appreciate it. And it was nice to chat with you on Sunday. Thank you. Uh, Floor, I just want to let everyone, the board know before I, uh, I, I stop talking here, I did receive Christina's oath via email. I just received it uh, a little while ago. So I just wanted everyone to know that. So congratulations. Welcome. Welcome aboard, Christina. <laughs> so. so we will continue with the elections and then move into the into the agenda. So uh, do we have any nominations for vice chair? Jonas? I nominate Caroline May. Any other nominations? Um, this is Chris and I would nominate Scott Thompson if he's willing to serve. And I, I greatly appreciate the expression of confidence but um, having, having tasted the first few moments of freedom, <laughs> I, I'm reluctant to plunge back into servitude. Um, however, if I may, because I, I think um, it's important to have um, choices in these elections, um, if, uh, if I may nominate um, Jill Olson, for um, for vice chair, I, I'm honored, but I'm going to decline that nomination. Okay, Scott again. Yep. Sorry. Um, if if Jill is um, unable to do it once again, um, in in order to have some um, some choice, uh, if if um, Kari Bradley, <laughs> we're going to be doing process of elimination here. I think, but, 
Um, if Kari would be willing to start. Thank, thank you, but no, thank you. I'm going to decline. Okay. Are you okay with that, Scott? And we move on. I, I'm fine. I, I having um, I, I don't want <laughs> to get a third strike. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions or want to have a little discussion, or can we go ahead and vote? I have a question. Yeah. Are these nominations were they preordained? based on board member discussions before this meeting? That's an interesting question, Chris. For the the um, assistant, what is it called? The, not the assistant Vice chair? Yeah. Is that what your question is, Chris? What, what rephrase that, please? I was curious if you meant in general or specific to the... Um, I keep losing the word for the co-chair, not Vi co vice chair, vice vice chair. Thank you. I couldn't get the word. Um, um, um for, for vice chair and in general. Chris, I'll tell you that I came to this meeting prepared to make those two nominations. Yeah. Okay. So coordination of nominations. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, wary. I'm not, a, I'm aware of political maneuvering. And it just sounds like what's going on here. So, um, so uh, Chris, just to to be clear, yeah. I think that we we all had it. I, I was approached by two, diff three different board members before, and I did talk to uh, we talked to Scott. Uh, I talked to Scott about how he wanted to 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 run. So there was no, uh, there there was a, a one on one conversation before to know how to run the election, but. Uh, so I don't think it's a political manure. It's got it suggested that it was good to have competition and he can speak to this too. We, I, that the last thing it, that any of us wanted was any confusion or, is that, I, is that I, clear? I, I have my answer, thank you. Okay. okay. Lindy? Um, I think just because Chris brought it up, I was reflecting as we went into this meeting on, I think it was two years, it was two years ago when we became the merged board and Scott's um, chairmanship, I think he discussed bringing us out or into the consolidation was his goal at that time, but he wanted it to be short lived. And I think there was even discussion of kind of that passing the torch and floor was considered at that time. And then last year he decided another year. So in my mind, I've been thinking. You just froze Lindy. Or is it me? You're frozen Lindy. You, you froze Lindy, but yeah, I think I'm back now because people are moving. <laughs> okay. Am I back? Yeah. Okay. I was just saying that I think along the line when we became a merged board, um, this was discussed the first year that Scott wanted the chairmanship that first year. And then there was a torch passing type. And then last year he wanted to continue. So I've been seeing it along that line as since we moved on. Jonas? Yeah, Chris, uh, are you concerned that open meeting laws have been have been violated, or do you think that, that something untoward absolutely. has happened? Jonas, absolutely not. Okay. That, that is, you know, I hadn't even thought of that, to be quite right. Yeah, no, that's not a concern. Okay. Can we go, can we move ahead and uh, all those in favor of approving of uh, the nomination for vice chair for Caroline May. Please click yes or raise your hand. And I vote yes. I guess I see all yeses and a couple of hands. So it's 12. 
Okay. So moving right along, uh, we have we have three committees uh, right now, and what we we yes, Jonas. I believe we need to elect a clerk. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I was just assuming it was you. Sorry, uh, nomination. Sorry, yes. It's not a done <laughs> deal. Any nominations for a clerk? I'll nominate um, Jonas. I believe he is the clerk right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. I will nominate Jonas. <laughs> and you accept the nomination. Thank you, Jonas. Any any other nominations? See, seeing none, all those in favor of uh, uh, supporting Jonas as our clerk for the next year, please raise your hand or click yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. All yeses. Okay. So again, we have we have three committees right now. In uh, for ease of uh, for ease of process, uh, we we decided with not decided, but we discussed today with uh, with with Brian that we don't really have charges yet for the charges are kind of obsolete. But instead of uh, spending time today doing that, we would have each committee uh, do um, work on the charge once they meet. Is that okay with everybody? And then I'll just a uh, uh, thumbs up so that we don't try to do that within this meeting. So, okay, so no discussion yes, on that. I have, so, a, I have a process question. The, sure. the, vote, okay, the board ahead. reorganization, is that what we're still under for committees? Or is that yes. board orientation? That orientation is it, separate. Yeah, it's it's separate. not the orienting it's of separate. the board, it's something separate. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 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 So a, a policy co policy committee, it, are those in the policy committee right now willing to continue to serve in the policy committee? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's list the names for, for Lisa so we can have them on the record. So if each of you, so Dorothy? Yes. Yeah, Chris? Yes. And just remind me who else is in that committee because I don't. It, it was JL. Okay. Anybody else interested in joining the policy committee, Vera or Chrissy? I see none. So. Well, we're going to need at least one more, do we not? Or yeah, we're going to need one more person there. Uh, Vera? Is she? I, I know, know that she still needs not, to send her oath, but she had work on that before. Her uh, oath, but you know. I would um, do it, but I want to make sure that I'm not on another um, committee that takes a lot of time before um, I commit to the policy. So sorry. I would be willing to join. Hey, great. Thank you, Chrissy. You're welcome. Do you have that, Lisa? Yes, thank you. Okay. Negotiations. Are the same members of the negotiations committee willing to serve this year? I am. Yes, Stephen, Jonas, and Diane? Yes, although I'd like to see Jonas's reaction if I said no, but anyway, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay. That's my reaction. Then, I will go dark, Diane. Okay. And then, uh, and I keep saying just three committees, but we had more than that. I'm going to jump into the quality committee. Can I, sorry, can right I now? interrupt for a second? For negotiations, yeah. was it just the two of them? I can't remember. No, just Diane, Jonas, Diane, Diane, Jonas, and Stephen Luke. Oh, yes. Thank you. So floor on the quality committee has been Diane, Jill, I believe Lindy joined us. Ca Caroline, are you, are you a member of that committee? Anna, and not written not officially, no. no. Okay, and then myself. But anybody is, of course, welcome to join us. 
Okay, so let's repeat that for, for Lisa. So we have Diane, Jill, Lindy, and Anna. And Kari. And I'm oh, sorry, and, and Kari, yes. And that's my favorite committee, but I'm not part of that committee this year. <laughs> and uh, so moving uh, to the next finance uh, and capital uh, uh, committee. Wait, so if you're not, is it, is there not an open seat on that one? If you're not. No, Lindy, 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 Lindy joined it when I stepped down. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So oh, in, in finance, it's been Scott, Chris. Oh, Joe, um, just, I'm sorry. Uh, um, I don't think there's limits on the number of members who can be on a committee, Karen, if you're interested. At least that's my impression. I don't think it's limit, limited to a certain number of, of board members. Thank you. Yeah. 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 yeah, and especially in the quality committee, uh, Carrie has made it clear and all, that we want uh, maximum participation. So anybody can come to the meetings is great. for Right, and for you it. can come and go. You don't, you're not obligated to come every month. That works a lot better for me. So I'll keep doing that. Thank you. Okay. So moving back to finance, so we can get. <laughs> uh, so S S Scott is still willing to be in finance, and Chris and myself. Yeah. Okay. And Kari. Yeah, I do that. And Kari. Okay. Great. I think Brian? we're also, we're also going to need a transportation committee. Uh, coming up. We're yeah, that's... Uh, what does okay. the transportation committee do? Uh, we'll be negotiating a contract uh, with the, we, our co transportation contract is up uh, this year. I was on that last time. Um, so I'd be willing to be on the transportation committee again. Okay. It, Brian, do you have a sense Jonathan, of, 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 sorry, Brian, sorry, do you have a sense sorry, of, Jonathan. Do you have a sense of when when that committee will meet and what the commitment will be? Uh, it, it's it's going to have to probably meet pr relatively sometime before the next start of the school year because uh, we're going to have to start getting the work and contract done before that time. So probably not. Uh, I wouldn't say it, it might be nice to piggyback when if and when negotiations do end. It might be coming up right after that time. So. Okay. So it, not to call out in it anybody but it, Jonathan will you be willing to serve in that committee on the transportation committee yeah sure okay so so Caroline Jonathan and am I hearing that you would want to do that to Jonas or was that just a question do we need three Brian or two yeah, probably it's, one. It's a I mean, obviously, I, I mean, to go along with what Caroline said in our conversation earlier, you know, any board member can always go to any other meetings. It's, it's open to the public. It's just nice to have an assigned number so we can always have a quorum. So, um, yeah, it would be preferred to have at least one more if possible. I would, I would really like to participate, but I'm going to wait until negotiations is over and see where we're at there. Okay. Uh, Vera, will you be willing to do that? I know you've... Maybe. Okay. I will say in case it, it helps anyone, last time um, the contract was up, it was like three or four meetings. Um, there were details in the contract and stuff that we needed to review in between meetings, but it's not a meeting heavy committee. Um, and uh, there's like three bus companies and it's really pretty clear looking through. Um, it, it just is not like it's fun for me because I know the bus companies and had worked with them, but it's it's not extremely time consuming compared to like negotiations and and the other ones. So if that helps anybody want to do it, that's my thoughts. Thanks. Okay. So well, I, I'd be willing Brian, to do it if that's helpful. Great. So we have Jill, Jonathan, and Caroline. No. Thank you, Jill. No, I think I think I don't have Jonas. I have Kari, Jonathan, and Jill. Is that? I think Jonas wanted to step down for a second, wait till negotiations. Yeah, yeah. So just Jonathan, yeah, Jonathan, Jill, and Caroline. Okay. And Caroline or Kari? I, I, Caroline. Kari, Caroline. Okay. Caroline, thanks. 
<laughs> okay, uh, moving right along in operational decisions, we need to appoint a uh, trend officers. Do we, yeah. do, we, do we need to vote on chairs for the committees? We, we have in the past, because we're doing the, the charges to as a committee, in the past we have done that at that individual and each individual committee, or should we do them right now? We can do that right now too. But uh, I, if everybody wanted to keep doing what they've been doing, I, Stephen? I, I favor we just let the committees in their first meeting decide who's gonna be the chairperson and just report back. I agree. I was thinking the same thing. Okay. Are you okay with that, Brian, too? That's how we've done it before. Yep. Okay. So appointing trend officers. Brian, I'm going to give this one back to you. You have some recommendations. Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, this uh, appointing truant officers, the principals at each school have been uh, basically overseeing the truancy at each of their buildings, but they, as a new, newly uh, merged school district, the uh, AOE has asked us for a person for each at the elementary level and at the um, at the high school uh, secondary level to really kind of have like a filter, try to make make sure we have more of a cohesiveness amongst truancy in the district. And so, you know, ultimately the principals uh, would be responsible for overseeing and reporting, helping to work with reporting truancy. However, at, uh, we do have two folks that are have been identified at the district level for the elementary and for the um, high, uh, for the uh, high school and uh, or U32 secondary level. So uh, the, per the person at the uh, secondary level is Eric Bennett. He does a lot of the truancy already uh, and obviously the principal is always involved, but, uh, and then at the uh, elementary level, the principal's uh, we'll, we typically will work with Kelly Bushy as the uh, truancy person. So it's Kelly and Eric, uh, as those, those are the two folks uh, that are the official for the district levels. And then I would say that uh, at the L, at the principal level, at the at the each school level, the principals would be the folks. Uh, so if you, if you had like a chart in mind, it would be the principals, but they would be working to uh, overall have a district truancy officer, Eric Bennett, at the secondary level and Kelly Bushy at the elementary level. Okay, so would somebody willing to do that nomination for Eric Bennett and Kelly Bushy? So nominated. Okay, I believe we don't need any seconds for that. We are just accept the nomination. Is that it? okay? So all of those in favor, please raise your hand or say aye. 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 Okay, I see 12, yep, all in favor, so we're all set. The next thing, the schedule is schedule an annual board work session. We are gonna talk about that in the board operations. I'm gonna skip it because we're really a little bit behind on that and it, we'll talk about it in the board operations in that section of our meeting. It, designate locations for posting meetings and agendas. It, Brian, you have the list. Uh, the, the postings of the uh, of the meeting agendas, uh, we typically should be posting them at every school, and we should be posting them online on our website. Are there any other areas that you would recommend? We've been posting them at the town clerk's offices, oh, town but clerk. I think, yeah. Okay, we can continue that. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? Uh, please raise your hand and accept. <laughs> okay. And then uh, review the requirements for the use of Robert rules for order. Uh, everybody okay with us continuing to use the Robert rules for our meetings? Yes. Yes. Jill, is that a question or yes? Uh, yes. The question. Yeah. Okay. So everybody, yes. Uh, the next one is board development and uh, opportunities and attendance to meetings. So first of all, in in that we're going to talk about that in board orientation. But first of all, welcome Chrissy uh, to our family <laughs> here. Uh, we're looking forward to working with you and Vera. Welcome back. <laughs> 
Yeah, so yeah, we need all of you. So thank you for being here and willing to serve your community. Um, it, tomorrow there is a webinar uh, held by the VSBA from 12 to one on uh, school boards. Uh, there's a pretty extensive um, support in the website with toolkits of what it is to be a board member. If you're interested, I'll send you some links. And then in our own board orientation, we'll talk more about it in how to um, do board development ourselves. Uh, next on the list is designate a newspaper for record. Is that that's the time Sargas, right, Brian? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then the last one is appoint the board representative of the Central Vermont Career Center Advisory Board. And I will be willing to continue to do that because I've already been appointed through the other um, uh, commitment that we did as we're restructuring the governance. If that would be okay with everybody. Brian? I'm not sure. Do, would it be wise to just have an official vote on both of these, the newspaper record, just to make sure it's voted upon by the board? Or do we just oh, designate sure. it? Okay. I, I thought everybody put their thumbs up. So, Tam Sargas, everybody. Oh, yeah, everybody okay with the Tam Sargas? Eh, sorry, I was just not yeah. more clear. Yes. And, uh, and then, floor as the. Yes. <laughs> And then will somebody be willing to nominate that? Yeah. I, I see all thumbs up, uh, Brian. Do we need to nominate Floor though? I guess we're just trying to. That's um, what I, I nominate trying. Floor to be our representative to the Central Vermont Career Center Advisory Thank Board. You. I will second that. Thank you. Scott. Do you have a question or you're okay? I, 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 I just like to caution that um, just make sure you're not taking on too much because um, it's a lot that you're, that you're doing. And I don't want you to feel like you're having to either stress out or give short shrift to one or another of your responsibilities. Yeah, I think with, with this one, that's why I didn't join any other committee. My interest is mostly in the finance committee to continue to do the work that I was doing before. And in this one, we don't, we, we meet three times uh, during the year in, um, and I think we have a not three that we leave every other Monday. Uh, uh, so every other month. So it's about four meetings. And at this point, I think between Stephen, Brian and myself are finally getting a uh, you know, uh, an idea of how it runs. And we're in the process of some changes. So we already signed a document with them where I was assigned to it. So I would like to continue with that. And uh, it, it, in, in this um, particular, we don't have an alternate. In the past, uh, Stephen Luke has been my alternate. And so if he would be willing to do that again, that would be appreciated, but. So can somebody nominate Stephen? I would nominate, I nominate Stephen. Stephen. <laughs> okay, so Jill and, and Chris second. Okay, sorry. Wait, sorry, what was, there? That what was that for? Which one was that for? For the Career Center, a oh. appoint board representative center of Vermont Career Center. Oh, instead of you? No, it's a, uh, it's, that one was, sorry, for alternative. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry. So we're a little behind on time, so I'm going to try to have 60 minutes for this, so. Sorry, Flora. Jonah? Just yes, one thing, ahead. do we need to discuss, do we, do we need to talk about uh, establishing or uh, the board meeting schedule? Uh, yes. And keep jumping. Are we doing that in board operations? I thought you said we were going to do that. It, it, yeah, that's what I was hoping. If that's okay with everybody, do it in board operations and combine it together. So I have it down here. So if, so we were just getting started. So welcome everybody. Any agenda revisions? Caroline, go ahead, Caroline. I have a proposed agenda revision, uh, four point three. 
executive session personnel superintendent evaluation. Um, as the facilitator of the superintendent evaluation discussion, I wanna be clear that this discussion is about our process and our timeline. Uh, I think it's essential that our design be about a position and not a person. Therefore, I strongly feel the discussion can and should be held in open session. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Caroline. Did I freeze or you heard the whole thing? Yeah, I, I did hear it. I okay, hear thank it. you. It's Scott. Thank you, Flora. That was, that was my decision originally to put it in executive session, to start it at least in executive session, because um, even though, as Caroline outlined, her conception of the discussion is uh, related solely to the position in the abstract, um, knowing how our discussions can often go I, I, I felt that it would be um, wise to allow for some margin for slopping over boundaries into actual discussion of evaluation. So that um, <clears throat> if, we, if we then start the discussion in executive session, um, it's probably a discussion that will extend over several meetings. Um, but just to see how it, how it goes um, in executive session and then get back to it in open session once we have a good fix on what we're doing and how we're doing. Okay. So, uh, Caroline, if you'd be okay with that and we continue as the agenda for today and then from now on we will move into it, having that uh, as a public discussion. Is that, does that work for everybody? And that will allow us to, Stephen? I, I would say being mindful of Scott's concern that we go into executive session, yes. but I'm also understanding Caroline's um, predicted presentation that if, uh, if it's not necessary to be an executive session, we immediately move, or we move out of it as uh, quickly as we can and then have uh, Caroline's discussions and open meeting. Uh, I'll give us time to, is everybody comfortable with Steve and Scott and Caroline just suggested? Yeah, good. Uh, yeah. Okay. So moving right, board or, uh, so in discussion, board orientation. Uh, so in board orientation, we had two parts. One, establishing the regular board meeting schedule. And we wanted to propose, uh, the agenda committee met, and we wanted to propose to have uh, one meeting a month, the third Wednesday of the month, instead of meeting twice a month, and that would, allow us to have the first uh, Wednesday of the month for committee meetings or for uh, really engaging our communities. So uh, it, it's a proposal to put out there and can speak uh, to it, please. So it's open for discussion and I just give it about, anybody else has any thoughts, uh, Carrie? I think it's a, uh, a great idea, uh, I think. Um, it, we, need to, we need to meet less in order to make this sustainable for ourselves. Um, did you have any idea how long that one meeting is gonna last? Thoughts about that? Yeah, I, we were thinking, we didn't spend much time talking about that, but in the past from our experiences that, you know, we really in three hours so that we can, so that we can all be sane and still make decisions. Make decisions. I know we're we, even in our two meetings. We are not a, a lot of decision making. Most of the work is happening in our committees. So I, I think it's possible. It might be wishful thinking, but I think if we all put our heads together and that uh, game, uh, we sh we should talk about there. Uh, 
I think it's possible, but we could give it a, we would have our March 17, the way that we have it right now, we will have our March 17 move the following month to a one meeting a month, if that's what the, the board agrees to do. I think, um, so if we're gonna... Hold on a minute, Chris, Stephen, look. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just let me know when, when the floor is open, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll call on you right after Stephen. You're on the deck. Oh, okay. I'm not 100% sure it'll work, but I think it's well worth um, giving it a shot. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Chris? Um, I, I am in favor of, of trying the st structural change as well, but I also would like to build in a very specific uh, the scheduled time for um, community forums, if that's what we're doing, rather than have it be happenstance, just because if we're going to, you know, putting committees, um, scheduling them for the times that we would otherwise have meetings um, actually disperses our, our membership as a whole because we don't meet, all the committees don't meet together. And if we're going to have forums, if part of the goal is to uh, have more thoughtful, long-term discussions with our communities or with ourselves, where we're not doing the business of the board like we are on a regular meeting, uh, then I think we need to actually schedule that as a ongoing scheduled activity as opposed to um, a come what may or happenstance um, activity. So if we, um, I'm all in favor of, of rescheduling, reordering our business, uh, and also looking at our agenda and see if there are things that we actually can eliminate and that and because we will have shorter time if we go to one, one meeting a month. Thanks. Great, agree. So we thank you for your input. So if everybody is okay with oh, Jonas and Jill on the deck, Jonas, go ahead. Um, I don't look forward to spending five hours every two weeks with you, lovely people. Not because of you, but because it's a lot of work. Um, but and I think I'm squarely in the minority here. But I think that we need the time. I think we need the decision making time. And you only have to look at agenda number nine uh, in today's packet to see why. Don't let my wife hear me say that, though. <laughs> I she guess I'm wondering. Jill. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Jill was on deck. Never Wait, mind. Sorry. 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 Okay. Um, thanks. Jill, I, yeah. Ahead. I I actually think so. Uh, I, I'm strongly in favor of, of making this change. I think we do relatively little business that we actually vote on. And what I'd really like to see is us use that other time for, as Chris said, public forums, but also to meet that goal of trying to have more public engagement. But also to, I, I think it would be really helpful to us if we take some of our more complex discussions and move them out of the business meeting and into a meeting where that's the only topic on the table so that we can be focused and energetic for it. So that's, that would be my, my hope. <laughs> I agree, Jill. Yeah. Acuteness is on the screen right now. So it's hard to concentrate. I know, it's I birthday. know. It's hard to compete. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, compete. It's his birthday. You want to say, yeah, you get your books. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead. So is buddy okay with that? Uh, please go ahead and raise your hand that we will have just one, the third Wednesday. Could I, could I say one thing, please? I, I, yes, yes, Dorothy, go ahead. The one thing that cons concerns me is that when we actually need to have a vote on something, it means we will only have once a month to make a vote on something that we need. And I'm thinking for all the businesses and various things we have to do, that might not be such a good idea. I'm not opposed to the whole idea, but I think it needs to be tweaked and worked on a little better. Okay, yeah. So if you're not opposed to it, I think let's give it a try. And then we can always have a special meeting if it's something we we talked with Brian and the agenda planning committee that the third Wednesday was probably better for board orders also because that's an important thing that we do. So let's let's try out the 
after Wednesday to order so that everybody can get paid and uh, and give move as uh, you know it can work better. So give it a try. Okay. Sounds like everybody had their hand up. Uh, Lindy, is that a question or okay? It's it's a question, okay. not okay. really a question, but um, I yeah. think for me, I'm going to block the two Wednesdays on my calendar, just so if we have yeah. to have a special meeting or a vote or something, I won't have bought, put something there or a community forum. That, it, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I think everybody should do that, yes. Okay, do you need anything else from that, Brian? To I think, you, did, do we have an official vote? Did someone motion, make a motion and second it? I'm just trying to follow the rule here. Yeah, can, can, we, can we have a motion? I can make a motion Steven. that we have one meeting on the third Wednesday of the month. Great, and I see Stephen Luke seconding it. I'll second, should the motion include the time? Okay, uh, the third Wednesday at 6 p.m. Second. Uh, should, 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 should the motion include the fact that we're going to have all our committee meetings on the first Wednesday? That's what I understood you to say. Now maybe I was off base there. No, we're we're keeping the first Wednesday flexible, and in and, and yeah, we would try to have committee meetings there first to nice and see. We have seen that in the past it didn't work for everybody, but so let's just uh, vote right now on the motion on there, and we read the board meeting is okay. So all those in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. Okay, I see just yeses. So the motion carries. Oh, there is a part the of the- Jonas's thumb was down. Oh, where is it? Jonas's thumb, where is His actual <laughs> picture, he has a I... physical thumb. Okay, so one no, Lisa. The next part is board or next presentation it was the scheduling our retreat. It, and we will want a, a retreat sooner rather than later. And the proposal for this retreat, now if I find my notes, we, we were hoping to achieve four things. It, one was uh, uh, board roles and responsibilities. The second one, uh, uh, Realized, uh, like we did last year, the board calendar uh, that addresses those goals was just organized the book calendar. And, and the, the last one is we're going to be uh, getting involved in a strategic planning. So it would become a talk about what, as a board, we expect about the strategic planning. Uh, Brian is going to uh, explain a little bit today. And he is having conversations with the leadership team. I understand this is all, you know, this is my first time doing this. And well, but so this is from our, I don't have any extra information. It's just what we heard at our agenda planning uh, meeting. So it would be great if we could use that first uh, retreat for that and do it in April. So we get, uh, we orient the board in roles and responsibilities. And if I'm missing something, Brian, please let me, oh, Sadie. <laughs> what, can Laura, you, you speak up if there's something use the second the second the 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 alternate board meeting that we're not having that time i'm just what i yeah. just wasn't following yeah okay use, the, use one of the alternate uh, times that we have either the first uh, week in in april or uh, but a wednesday, a wednesday, we wednesday night not not a weekend a wednesday night yeah a wednesday okay. night yeah 
So, and that is just sharing information. We don't need to make that decision it, today. I think we would have to plan for it, but if what we do need is input, if the themes look like something that the board would wanna do in the first retreat, like priority, those are four priorities to, to me. So we, if we're okay with those four priorities, we will move ahead and plan. Brian? Sorry, uh, that, that's not me with the gavel. That's Zadie taking her gavel back. So. Uh, I was just going to say that uh, the one thing is if you know we're going to do some sort of retreat format, we may want to, um, uh, you know, if we're going to have a, a time to meet with folks in person, but obviously we would have to see how we're doing with uh, the vaccinations and if we're even allowed to do that per the Department of Health. And if not, it would have to be on Zoom. And I do know that a lot of times it, it would be stronger and more powerful uh, if we can always meet in person. And I guess we can see as we start to 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 organize it what works best for for board members. Now, as it is, we don't you know there's the guidelines will meet in person anyways. So I think we should go ahead and plan for now on on doing a, a Zoom first retreat with a facilitator, it, so that we can just you know it, and we had some practice from last year, and then we'll bring Chrissy and Vera into the picture. Thumbs up. Can, can you review what the four um, the four bullets were there? I missed the second one. So can you read the three that you have? And I'll tell you because I don't have my notes right in front of me. So I have board roles and responsibilities, board yeah. calendar, and or board goals. Board goals is the second goals. one. Goals. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's move ahead. 4.2 is appointment of new board members. Brian. Uh, yes, as of right now, I see Christina Pollard here uh, and I did receive her uh, sworn oath uh, uh, actually during the meeting. So uh, I do have it. So uh, she is our, our new board, newest board member. I know uh, we did have a second uh, person who did qualify, but I have not yet received a sworn oath. So we will not be able to appoint her tonight, but we can definitely appoint uh, Christina tonight. So Christina, welcome to Washington Central Unified Union School District's board. Thank you. Do you have anything to say or is it the floor is yours? <laughs> <laughs> Just I'm, I'm happy to be here and excited to learn and help where I can. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so now uh, we're looking for a motion to move into executive session for personnel and superintendent. Sorry. Is, yep. Oh. Floor, one, one, one thing just about the appointment of, um, of school board members. I believe that part of that uh, item uh, is about uh, finding folks to appoint for, for the two seats that are currently still empty. Uh, the three-year Worcester seat, and I'm not sure what the seat in Berlin is. Great to see Vera back. Hi, Vera. I didn't know it was you from Berlin until I saw your name on the on the Zoom chat. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know either. Until today. But we will. Others? But we, we will need we will need to find candidates for uh, for appointment to hopefully get select boards to uh, to send them to us. Actually, I think we appoint them. Uh, the school board appoints the members, the new members. I believe the, I believe the process is that the select board of the town refers a candidate to us, uh, and then we approve that person. That that's how it used uh, to be, but now we can advertise. But yeah, I think the, Jonas. I think that changed. That that was statutorily changed, Jonas, so that the board, um, just just like with Caroline, uh, she wasn't referred. Yeah. to us, uh, she came, she, they, they made application directly to the board. Yeah. Okay. And then the last, the last thing uh, with the appointment of the, the new board members is uh, Christina, it's uh, last year uh, having somebody be either the mentor or if you wanted to had any questions uh, or something like that. So. I don't know if there's a volunteer to be Christina's uh, mentor or guide for <laughs> as she gets started. There we go. 
Jonas is your guy, Christina. You're in good hands. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas. You got it, Chrissy. We'll talk soon. Okay. So going back to an executive session for personnel, superintendent evaluation, could I have a motion? I'll move it. Don't move. Back Sorry, in. Chris. <laughs> so right. Scott okay. moves and Chris seconds. Is that okay, Chris? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's go ahead and all those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Aye. Okay. See any thumbs down? Okay, let's do it. All right, Jim. Jim we're put, on your hands. You can put the school board and myself into executive session, please. That sounds good. And and for some of the new folks, I think I have you. But if I did miss somebody, um, I'm, I'm not in executive session, so um, just you know, let me know if if you don't end up getting a notification right now. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for your patience with the executive session. Uh, let's move right ahead to 4.2, a uh, public comments discussion. I'm hoping that we don't take more than seven minutes on this. I know that that's hopeful, but let's give it a try. Uh, Stephen? Um, I would be willing to uh, lead a small group to bring to the next board meeting two or three recommendations on public comments. I would like to see this opportunity improve. I suspect there might be a few other people on the board that might be willing to work offline and bring some specific recommendations that then the board could um, discuss so it wouldn't be a brainstorming session. I think that's a great idea, Scott. I agree and would be willing to join Stephen in that venture. And I, I would do likewise. This is Chris. Okay. Caroline, do you have a question or want to join? I was going to join, but I think it has enough members um, that they'll do a great job. Thanks. Okay. okay. So discussion. Do you need me to do anything with facilitating? Sorry, do you need me to do anything in facilitating that meeting or, or the three board members work together? To, to schedule that themselves. I just want to make sure. I'm sending out an email Steven? right now. We'll schedule okay. it ourselves. Great. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Thank you, Stephen, Scott, and Chris. Okay, so that was less than seven minutes. A 4.5 equalized pupil weights study. A so Dorothy, you had sent some email, uh, an email to all of us. Uh, do you want to? Yes, yeah, so I, I would. Um, I, I'm very, very concerned about this. It's been um, hanging fire now for a year and a half. We've had the information and haven't been doing much with it. Um, I did write a letter to our three senators to support, which is actually the more active one is S13, which is on um, student waiting. And um, I heard from Andrew Perchlick, and I, I was a little concerned. Um, I, I have found him to be a good senator for us for Washington County, and I've liked what he supported. And he said he did. Last year he was on the Education Committee, and he voted to support S13, and he's supporting it now. Um, as, it, as it goes also to the House Ed Committee. And he said, I think there is support for moving forward on this issue. And then he says, unfortunately, AOE testified against having them implement S13. And that upset me because I really, I, I just find it unconscionable that the AOE would say, no, we're not going to do this. When part of everything we know is we need to be equitable. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know that Washington Central itself will, will benefit a lot from this, but I think the poor kids of Vermont will benefit for us joining the coalition that is fighting really hard to get this considered and on the table and being acted on this year 
not putting it off for another whole year, which you know it will then take a couple of years to get something changed. So my big plea is, could we join the coalition and, and, and support what they're doing? Now, um, they are asking for money if, um, if you wish to give it to them and there's not an entry fee. And there are meetings every Thursday from five to six where they talk about what they're working on. Uh, but I, my push now is to have that coalition um, supported by a lot of the state so we can support the poor children throughout Vermont where we are all in this together. We brag about Vermont. And so we have to help Vermont and this is a way to do it. If you have any questions, I'll do my best. Scott? Thank you, Fleur. <clears throat> I'll actually make a motion that the board uh, the, of Washington Central Unified Union School District sign on <clears throat> to this coalition to, um, to promote implementation of the Equalized Pupil Waiting Study. Um, Before I continue, I'll let a second come forth. I'll second. Thank you, Chris. Um, <clears throat> this, I think, is literally an opportunity for us to put our money where our mouths are. <clears throat> we've been we've been really great at <clears throat> at the symbolic stuff. <clears throat> pardon me, at flags, you know, yard signs scholars and residents, <clears throat> but this is about remedying decades of inequitable <clears throat> weighing of, of pupils and thus of distribution of resources. This is real systemic inequity that we now, um, through the, the joint bills, and I think <clears throat> S13 is actually the one that is that the coalition has gotten behind. <clears throat> Dorothy will correct me if I'm wrong, but um, <clears throat> this, just to, uh, again, to underscore what Dorothy said, even though we are actually losers, um, according to the Joint Fiscal Office, and, and substantially <clears throat> so, um, I, I think to the extent that equity is generalized, to the extent that injustice is remedy for for all Vermont children that benefits us that <clears throat> lifts us up so um I think this is really an opportunity to show to actually do what we say and and act on what we you know have um at least professed to believe Are, are there any more questions before I have a, for Dorothy or uh, for Scott? I, I have a, a question for Dorothy or Scott. Um, Dorothy, you mentioned about the AOE um, advocating that this provision not go into effect. Um, is that, do we have anything substantive from the AOE actually saying that? Um, well, if you read, um and I can send it to you. Actually, it's in in the Vermont School Board Association. They just sent around a thing about this, what's been going on as the legislature. And if you'll scroll down yep. and look at, at that one, um, they uh, give the Secretary of, of uh, Education's testimony where he makes five points. And, and I was, I, uh, watched that hearing on the 23rd when he testified. And I was very disappointed that the Vermont School Board Association in that where they where they were sent his testimony, they did not include Alex Yin's testimony, who's from Winooski. And Winooski is, is really suffering. Their kids don't have bus service because they have to put as much money as they can into all the ELL students and the poor students they have. So there's a, Winooski is, is not small. It's not rural, but that's a lot of walking for a lot of kids 
and where other other cities and, and towns like Mount Pelier do have busing. So to me, it, it's really, I, I was really upset with the school board association uh, for not adding that information. And I'm hoping that they will work to support S13. The other point I wanted to make is that this is really closely associated with the Brigham decision. And even Mark McDonald, who's a Senator from Orange at that hearing said, well, do you wanna do this now? Or do you wanna wait for a court case when we're forced to do it in a hurry and we don't do it right? So just that's where it's gonna go eventually. I won't be the one, but that's probably where it will go. And I just wanna make put pressure on the legislature that constantly saying coronavirus is makes it too hard for us to do it is not an issue. Washington Central can tell you that coronavirus won't stop us from doing it. They didn't stop, it didn't stop us from opening our schools. And I'm very proud of everybody who pushed for that. I was tentative at first and I'm very glad we did it, but I really want to be part of this and see it through. Um, the, other part is, the other part of my question is, what type of funding is the coalition looking for from us, if any? Go ahead, Scott. May Scott, I flip? Yeah, go, go um, ahead and then I... Thank you. Uh, I just, <clears throat> that was to be my postscript to, um, I, I forgot to mention, I, I'm not recommending <clears throat> that we that we necessarily donate money to this effort because if the effort is successful, we will, <clears throat> it, it will cost us. Um, and uh, according to the joint fiscal office um, estimates. So I think what we're showing is that we're willing to, to take that hit in order for there to be broader justice done to all children in Vermont. So I, I have a couple of questions to say. Oh, Chris, are you done with your questions? No, you go ahead, Floor, and I'll, I'll follow up. OK, so so one uh, one question I, I, I think is, if, do we have enough information to be making this decision right now? You're saying that we wouldn't join giving money, but that the coalition is asking for money. I, I think that we just got this information. Uh, now it would be good to have a, you know, more information in front of us before we join it. And then one last question would be, uh, Brian, uh, knowing our district, do you have any input from, uh, for us? Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, this is uh, a very complex issue, right? Uh, because uh, I, we, a lot of folks talk about equity and how do we fund equity uh, and, uh, you know, we, our district, we also have some, you know, we're also working with equity in our own, within our own district, right? That's something that we're also committed to. Uh, and, you know, racial equity, you know, we're looking at uh, uh, other areas where we're looking at institutional equity. Do we even offer different programs in different schools? Uh, and I think that, you know, there are some districts that have more funds than other districts, and there may be some uh, different equity issues just there in general. Um, so it's really a philosophical, uh, deep uh, discussion. Uh, you know, one thing you'll have to consider is the impact on our local, you know, on local taxes. You know, how much money will will this impact us? Uh, currently, I only have the 2020 um, uh, information on how this would, and I do believe it. It is a uh, if these bills are adopted uh, at the House or Senate uh, at the House level or Senate level, they will impact our taxes. Uh, yeah. Uh, in a, uh, but however, uh, it, this would be an opportunity for us to really try to help uh, the state with, you know, dealing with the equity issues across the state of Vermont. Uh, so, but I don't have the 2021 do uh, document from the Joint Fiscal Office, so I'm not really sure. I have seen the J Joint Fiscal Office document from 2020, which I believe is available on the website, but I have not seen the uh, updated one. Dorothy. Um, I think on, on that VSBA um, accounting of what's going on in the legislature, at the bottom of that uh, thing about S13, 
sort of changed who was waiting. There's a link that you can click on that tells um, uh, each district's percentage of poverty and, and, uh, and things like that. And I remember that Washington Central was at 6% of whatever it is and, and other places were much higher and other places were much less, of course. But <clears throat> you can get that information there. Yeah, so I'm wondering if we could give a much richer explanation to the board before we make uh, we, before we make to join the call. Um, what I was going to ask is, I, I would like to tomorrow when the coalition has a meeting, if we can't have an official vote vote that goes on the record for joining them, could we have a straw vote of what you would be interested in doing? Uh, I really think because crossover is coming that they need all the support they can get as soon as possible. And uh, for that particular bill, I think crossover is on the 19th. So we could scooch it in on the 17th, but it would be kind of nice to know where we're going. Just as a point we, of we, order, we do have there, a motion there on is the a floor. motion. Wait. There's a motion on the floor. Yeah. That's what I was. Scott, yes. can you? Yeah. Can you so we, we have a motion. Can you review the verbiage in the motion, please, Scott? Sure, Lisa. Um, I moved that <clears throat> the board of our school district formally join the coalition <clears throat> to of other Vermont school boards to support legislation calling for implementation of the equalized pupil waiting study. I think it was something like that. Is that okay? Scott, will you take from the amendment? <laughs> Depends on what it is. <laughs> implement, implement it this year. Ah, <clears throat> thank you. Or legislation this year. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think the easiest way to do it would be to uh, to vote up or down this motion. Uh, so, if people feel like they need more information, vote down the motion. And if you're comfortable making a decision now, you can vote yes. Uh, Caroline, do you have a process question or? I do. I, you said it. I just want to repeat it to make sure. If we're voting it down, it doesn't. It doesn't mean we don't support this. We just don't feel like we have enough information right now to support it today. Is that accurate? I, Correct. Yes. Thank you. Correct. Or you could, of course, be voting no. Yeah. Period. Thank you. Okay. So, all those in favor of it, the motion on the floor. Please Please say I or raise your hand. Aye. I can't see everybody. So I have one, two, three, four, six, seven. And oh, seven yeses. Can somebody, no. Uh, D Diana, are you trying to say something? Well, I think there's, it, I thought there were, Stephen, were you at yes? Because I thought there were eight. Okay, so it's hard to, the hands go up yeah. and down to three, four, five, six, seven. I still just see seven. But I think Chris. Eight. I and, voted yes. Okay. So that's nine. Actually. Okay, so eight, that's nine. Okay. So the motion passes. Thank you. Um, moving well, right along. Uh, you're moving along, but I'd like, I, I'm going to leave the meeting now. I've got something I have to attend to here at home. So thank you all for listening to me and doing that. And um, if I can join again, I will. Good night. Good night, Dorothy. Okay, so it's Anna and Towns wait so long, but we're ready for student reports.
Awesome. It's a special meet of you down. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I guess the first major piece of news is that uh, this is the end of our February vacation. It kind of went into March, but this is the uh, students today return to school if they were in person. Um, and if they were remote, then um, some of them had attended class meetings depending on how their schedules were. <laughs> Um, yes, but today was the last, uh, was our return to school after vacation. At the very end of March and start of April, um, towns unfortunately won't be held be graduating, but <laughs> I'll be able to start choosing my classes for my senior year, as well as all the other students in year 32, which is always a very exciting time to be able to see what classes you can do. And actually this year that we have um, a big choice for CBL, which is community-based learning, pilot, um, branching out for middle school and high school. So it's very nice to look forward to that. Um, pretty soon people uh, people uh, should start buying yearbooks to in order to get a yearbook uh, students uh, either email Sarah Wolf or they um, there is a way to order them on the newsletter. I really recommend you should go get one. Uh, even during COVID we have some really cool pictures. Um, also, with the 32 Chronicle, if any of you follow that, it's the 50th year, and we have um, launched a sort of celebration honor of all that, and there's some articles going up that have just started, and there's a quiz that I recently published, um, trying to see how well you know U32 and the history of it, so y'all should go check that out in Chronicle. Um, applications for uh, the Career Center for CBCC. Um, are due soon, uh, the 5th of March, um, for students who want to pursue um, a, a trade program. Um, the applications are due soon. And as we know, winter sports are happening and games are going on. And we actually have a local um, YouTube channel recording. It's called CBT Sports. And it, since uh, we're not allowed to have people actually go to the games, you can watch them streamed on YouTube. And we have some um, students at our school who actually work there. So it's really nice to be able to see the sports even if we're not there in person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, this is wonderful. I, any board members have any questions for our students? Seeing none, moving right. Now's your okay. turn, Brian. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm gonna. We have a COVID-19 update. Uh, I'm gonna have. Uh, there's a lot going on with COVID-19 in our district. So I'm gonna turn it over to Elizabeth for, for her to talk, and then I would like to just uh, give the board uh, some information about the recovery phase uh, of where we're headed as a state and district. So Elizabeth, are are you still there? You're muted, Elizabeth. Okay, so there is a lot going on and it's really all good news for us. Um, I guess I'll do the, the biggest first, which is that you probably all know that the vaccine has been, um, ro it's rolling out for the staff. And um, we're expecting a phone call tomorrow to get, to give numbers and to get specifics about when this will happen. Um, and I feel, I feel wonderful. You know, there's a lot of people who say they're wait, waiting to go back to school until they're all vaccinated in our district. That hasn't been, you know, I'm so proud of everybody. You know, I was at Rumney today and walking around the classrooms, I recalled walking around in August when everybody was so afraid and terrified. And, you know, there was a shower curtain around a teacher because he was so scared, you know, and that's changed a lot. I walked around and you can feel that that anxiety has decreased a lot. However, it's still there. And um, I feel like it's it's so wonderful that they're gonna be able to access this vaccine very soon. And, um, and I think that will help for the rest of the year for everybody's anxiety to even be lower, you know? And so that they can feel a little bit safer that they're, what they're doing is working. Um, uh, so, and the other part is that, um, 
we're in a really good position. You know, we had three cases right before vacation and um, there were a lot of people implicated in potentially contact, you know, close contacts and not one other positive case came from that. So the transmission is, is non-existent. You know, we have not had any transmission in the schools and that's really good news. And it's about the way where everybody is pulling together and doing what's right. And I noticed today um, in, in taking a look at the screening process and a lot of people, there were people who traveled over the vacation, but you know, they, as far as I know, they've answered the questions appropriately and honestly, and the kids aren't in school right now. You know, they're waiting for a test or they've had a test and they can be back. So I feel like people are really trying to do the right thing and it's working. So those, I, I don't think there's, I think that's about it. It's, it's, it's a, we're in a good place and we'll keep doing what we need to do. And hopefully we'll get that vaccine out soon, which will just, you know, it will relieve people. And it also will give them a little bit of permission to do like to travel, to see grandparents, to do all those things that people have been holding their breath waiting for. So that's it. <laughs> Any questions for Elizabeth? Scott Thompson. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, I guess as we know from just about every horror movie that's ever been made, <clears throat> the moment of maximum danger is when the protagonists think that they're just about home free. So <clears throat> I hope that you know the um, the precautions are still maintained as as. Um, <clears throat> faithfully and rigorously as you were describing Elizabeth. That's the plan, absolutely, right. It, Stephen, do you have your hand up for a reason or was just left over, left over? Okay, Brian, go ahead on the next, the exciting okay. news of- like, yeah. yeah, so uh, so, the, so we're now, uh, just so the uh, way the state of Vermont is framing the start of the school year, they called it reopening phase. Uh, and we, we definitely have had a very successful reopening, right? Uh, our children are in school. We have had zero transmissions uh, in our schools. Uh, we're, uh, we're, getting, we're working to try to get through this uh, as, a do, as a district together. Uh, the second phase, however, is being called recovery. It's, that's the official title uh, that the state is calling it. Uh, they believe that this will be one of the more challenging phases for districts across the uh, state of Vermont. And also, uh, you know, other states may call it something different, but uh, it's going to be a challenging piece because, you know, what does recovery look like? And it may be different at each district because of the different uh, reopening plans that everyone had implemented uh, at the start of the year. But if you uh, look at page four of the uh, packet, uh, today's packet, I did provide an op-ed from the Secretary of Education. I'm not going to read it, but it gives you an idea of uh, how we're doing with re regards to the rest of the state of Vermont. Uh, you know, a large majority of our students are attending school on a daily basis, 95% attending in person and remotely daily. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, despite those successes, one of the big questions is how, have our, how has our children been impacted by this COVID uh, epidemic? Academically, obviously social, emotionally, uh, children are in school, so that's very helpful. Uh, but nationally, they're calling it the COVID slide, meaning that there's been an, uh, some academic gaps in learning and learning loss because children were not in school. So if uh, you recall, uh, I think we've minimized the COVID slide as much as we possibly could this school year. However, uh, we did this pandemic did start prior to this school year, and we do have about four months of time where our children were not necessarily in school uh, learning. And so uh, you know, right now, the idea is we're trying to figure out exactly what the COVID slide is and what was, what was this COVID slide for our own district, right? We have to look at uh, student achievement data. I know we, you know, we talked about literacy, literacy and math and those areas, and we'll be, looking, uh, we'll be continuing to look at those uh, data points. However, I just want you to be aware of that this recovery piece is going to be, you know, how will districts make the time up that was lost for children. Uh, there have been some ideas floated by superintendents, uh, not, uh, both in Vermont and outside of Vermont. Uh, and I think we're still waiting to hear from the uh, Agency of Education what this means and what, it, what are possibilities. I do know some superintendents in other parts of the country 
uh, have proposed uh, to their state legislatures uh, that we should have year-round schooling for the next two to three years to make up for the learning loss that happened. Uh, maybe we should have extended school days. These are all big topics, uh, something that uh, you know we have not fully explored at, at the leadership team level, with teachers, anyone. But I'm just letting you know, because it's just so brand new coming out. Um, but I do think we need to first diagnose what the COVID slide meant for us and what uh, possibilities exist for us to help remedy uh, this situation with the COVID slide and ultimately uh, get through the recovery phase. All right, so, uh, so uh, one area that did come up uh, that everyone is, I will say, um, and I'm not, I still would like to more time to review this, but I just want to put this in the board's purview. The uh, uh, Agency of Education is highly recommending having a recovery uh, coordinator, director uh, level position, uh, and they are also uh, recommending a recovery team. I will be looking and meeting with my leadership team in the near future uh, to explore this. However, I just want to let you know that there are some conversations around this. I do recall uh, back in June uh, when I first started, the Agency of Education did talk about having a COVID-19 coordinator. And I will say, uh, Elizabeth has been worth every single dollar that we could put out there. And we received full reimbursement for that position. So just putting it out there that um, I, I did talk to some colleagues around the state and people did say, oh, well, let's just do a stipend position for the COVID-19 coordinator. I do talk to, and I know that I did not agree with some of my colleagues uh, in the state uh, however, uh, I talked to some of those similar colleagues and they're saying they're looking at someone more full time because they believe just, there's going to be a lot of work. Uh, not ready to talk about more about it right now. I'm just putting that thought out there uh, that there is this is going to be, I think, a major undertaking, uh, even though we're doing better, I think, than a lot of other places right now because of our highly successful reopening plan. Uh, but recovery plan will what will that look like? What, what are we able to do? That'll be a larger discussion uh, with leadership team members uh, when we are uh, ready to uh, do that. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. Does it? Uh, oh, I think Kari has a question. Yeah. Um, any consideration of um, high school going uh, in person full time? Uh, we're, this, I'm still working. I think we're still uh, we're still monitoring that situation. Uh, I've I've been speaking with the U32 administration, and they are um, uh, trying to see what can be happening. But at the same time, we want to opt opt out of mostly precautionary. We're, we're still, as Scott had just said, this uh, pandemic is far from over. Uh, we still haven't had our teachers vaccinated, and uh, at some point, we're going. They're probably going to start at, talking about vaccinating. Uh, students as well. So we're still, uh, you know, we'd love to get everyone back, but I think there's still a lot of work to do. And it, it may not be necessarily possible until we have an idea of exactly when folks are going to be vaccinated and um, how long will it take uh, to plan accordingly. Stephen, do you have anything to say about that? I see Stephen here. I would just offer that um, until there's any change to the six foot minimum distancing with students, that is a big uh, contributor to why we're in a hybrid schedule. And I would also say that um, students under 16 years of age will not be getting a vaccine um, before the school year is over. So um, those two factors alone are going to require us to still um, be in a hybrid schedule until there's major changes to that. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Any other questions? Oh, sorry. I, I, is the floor clear? Can I? Yes, go ahead, ask? Chris. Thank you. Um, so, Brian, do you have a sense on when the um, evaluation for um, determining what our COVID slide is, um, or if there is one, when that will begin and when we may see some results? Yeah. And then the second question is, um, it sounds like there's just based on media discussion and um, of the press conferences with the governor and, and the AOE that there's going to be a lot of pressure to have all students back um, in the classroom uh, in April or May. Uh, and what I'd like to discuss with the board as a whole is whether or not our district will maintain the um, online 
uh, school for the students who are already in it through the end of this year, rather than, than disrupt that, even if there's pressure from the AOE and the governor to um, call, recall all students back into the classroom. Can we, can we put that as a future board um, topic to not discuss it today because we, we're not prepared to discuss it today. Let Brian talk to the leadership team and then we'll discuss this at our next board meeting. Uh, Chris? If, if, if it is our next board meeting, just because if we're going to go to a monthly board meeting, um, it may be moved by, by April. So yes. Yeah. On that part, well, March, okay. March 17. Um, which, which March part? 17. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Brian. You still have two items that I hope can be. Yes. Uh, yes. So, so uh, the other uh, piece is uh, the district budget and article votes. So I uh, just want to uh, let everyone know that I do think that the budget vote, I'll go through e each one of them, but I just wanted to uh, congratulate the following board members uh, to being reelected. Uh, that, that was uh, Jonathan Goddard, Kari Bradley, Lindy Johnson, Caroline May, and Chris McVeigh. So uh, congratulations uh, for uh, coming back to the board and uh, rolling up your sleeves and getting ready for uh, the recovery phase next, right? So uh, I also would uh, like to congratulate Christine Pollard. Uh, she uh, uh, was uh, newly, uh, newly sworn in, and uh, she is also a member of uh, so congratulations again, Christine, for uh, becoming part of the board. I will make sure that we get you set up on, uh, on our email and send any, uh, any other new member toolkits and things like that to you uh, shortly. The uh, other board member that may be, I'm not sure, again, Vera Frazier, I have not received an oath. Uh, I'm not sure if she's uh, coming or not, but uh, you know, uh, she has uh, qualified. So uh, hopefully we'll hear something soon from uh, Vera. Uh, Moving along, uh, those were the uh, first four articles. Uh, the, art uh, the other articles that were there was uh, Rosie LaCare was uh, elected our district clerk and Mary Ormsby was elected our district treasurer. Uh, last, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, we did not get a uh, facilitator uh, yet. There's a lot of write-ins, but we didn't get a majority. So we'll have to have that uh, filled at another time. The other articles that uh, passed, all of our articles passed uh, very convincingly. The uh, Article 5, which was fixing the compensation uh, for our school district, uh, that, that passed uh, 2,556 votes for yes. Uh, there were 544 no's and uh, 205 blank, uh, blank uh, for the fixing the compensation. Article 6 which was the budget. And I believe this is a reflection upon all of our hard work this year, all the sacrifices of our teachers and staff, leadership team, and the board. I mean, I, I have to say, I came in here in July and you were doing two meetings, two meet, we were going all out, two or three meetings a month uh, to get the schools open. Uh, so this is really uh, a combination of five communities coming together. And uh, it seems like that uh, the public has really uh, weighed in on that with our passing our budget in an overwhelming fashion. Uh, the votes count I have is 2,314 yes, 786 no. So it's almost a three to one margin uh, passing the budget. So it was very, uh, it was very convincing. The uh, Article 7, uh, holding funds in reserve was also uh, overwhelmingly passed. Um, there were uh, uh, 2,561 yeses, 581 noes, and 161 blanks. Uh, Article eight was also passed in another convincing vote. Uh, uh, this was, uh, Article eight was two, it's about borrowing money. Uh, 2,305 2, yeses, 841 noes, and 173 blanks. Uh, so uh, I do think that that was uh, a very successful meeting yesterday. I'm happy it's uh, behind us, right? We're gonna get ready to move on to the next phase uh, of uh, moving through the school year. And just very happy with, uh, again, I think it's a testament to our teachers and staff, our hard work with the reopening of schools. And uh, also I think a reflection of uh, what folks wanted in their budget this year during a pandemic.
you, you had some a couple other things you want to share with us, the strategic planning and yes, yes. Yeah, I didn't know if any any questions or anything. Okay, so uh the, the next piece was just to I'll let the board know. I know we had a uh educational quality meeting earlier today. Uh Jen did a, a great job of presenting our SLOs and, and talking about the uh some of the literacy assessments. I do think uh there is going to be some major, major uh, proposals here. Uh, the Senate Education Committee and the House Education Committee have really uh, drafted some bills uh, that I think would uh, be very helpful in pushing uh, literacy education uh, forward in the state of Vermont. Uh, there are, you know, I'm not gonna read through everything in these pages, which are on pages seven and eight. However, they're looking at, if you look at Senate bill, uh, 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 draft requirements 21 0807. Uh, they're looking at a $3 million grant to train teachers in methods of teaching literacy. Uh, so they're really looking at uh, creating some function uh, at the Agency of Education to build districts, districts' capacities to um, implement literacy uh, education uh, better in, in across the state. They're looking at creating a literacy division at the Agency of Education uh, responsible for improving literacy outcomes in pre-K through uh, grade 12. Uh, this one I thought was very interesting as well in this, uh, the Agency of Education, VSBA, VSA, VCSEA, and VPA will be responsible for developing a statewide vision for literacy, uh, including the core principles for early literacy instructional practices. And here's where I thought that was uh, very key, in a clear articulation of expectations for tier one, tier two, and tier three literacy instruction. So there could be some guidance coming from the state, uh, building their capacity at the uh, agency of education level uh, that can really help out local districts uh, as we develop our MTSS systems, uh, look at our, relook at our curriculum. There could be a lot of opportunities here. Uh, not gonna go through everything else here in the bill. Uh, there is talking about, uh, talking about using screeners for markers of dyslexia and uh, there's some information there. The House Education Committee Bill was also very interesting, uh, looking at possibility of giving out money uh, to uh, districts to address system-wide literacy development in accordance with the principles of Act 173, which is, I know, wet, heavy and will, we, will become heavier on all of our minds as we leave the pandemic and uh, leave the recovery phase, uh, because that will, um, again, impact districts across the state. So they're looking at possibly giving up to three years of $100,000 per year for districts to um, really address some system-wide literacy development. So this areas that could be used, the money could be used for training teachers, instructional leadership, hiring a literacy coach. So I know uh, looking at those types of areas that there could be some additional funding coming. Uh, and also looking at uh, benchmark literacy assessments, uh, focusing in the areas of phonemic awareness, phonics, reading fluency, vocabulary and comprehension. And uh, again, articulating the MTS S system when it comes to literacy. So I think there could be a lot of really good things coming out from the agency of education in the area of literacy, uh, which I know a lot of folks uh, in our district and beyond are not, uh, uh, we wanna do more with uh, improving student outcomes in literacy. Uh, any questions on that one? or? Should I continue? Continue. Continue? Okay. Uh, the next page I, I would like to report on is uh, the three to five year strategic plan. Uh, I know we're gonna be at leaving, uh, you know, again, we're, we've done the curriculum review, we have board goals, we have, we've had a lot of work that we've done throughout the year, moving, getting us to this point. So I think we're getting into a very interesting and exciting time for our school district. The uh, three to five year strategic plan uh, that we've been talking about for a while, uh, we're gonna start trying to make that a reality. Uh, and as we start uh, looking how, to, how, how will Washington Central begin to focus and align our efforts and resources for the district to address these goals. Uh, and I know that the board and in individual conversations with board members, uh, board members have spoken to me about incorporating voices from all constituents, the importance of having uh, not a top-down process, but a uh, really a bottom-up process, making sure we listen to our teachers, we listen to our, our parents and community members, we hear from our students, we hear from our um, 
uh, leadership team, and really, and, and of course, obviously, definitely, definitely hear from the board, right? But uh, but we're really trying to make sure we get get all that information. And you know, what a great, what an interesting time to be thinking about doing this, as the state may even be developing their own literacy uh, uh, system at the state level. But there were some areas here that uh, when we get into the strategic planning process, uh, there are several artifacts I think that we're definitely going to want to use and consider and read through when we uh, create the strategic plan. I listed them here. I'm definitely uh, interested in hearing what board members, what else would board members like to hear uh, for this. I have them listed on page nine of the packet. Uh, currently, the artifacts that I have listed here, and again, this is just a short brainstorming list of uh, artifacts that we can pull ideas from and think about what we want to do for our district moving forward. They are superintendent entry plan, curriculum management audit report, focus groups, surveys, community forums. Uh, those are some uh, some of the, you know, it's a list. It's not a uh, final list. It's just a starting list. So if you have any ideas, I would love to get your input yeah. right now. If there's any opportunities, I know we uh, have some ideas, but it'd be great to hear anything now. Oops, sorry, Scott, go ahead. Sorry, I was muted. Thanks for that. Yeah, um, I just like to suggest, in addition to community forums, um, maybe uh, a separate line for local resources that aren't just sort of talking to people in general, but <clears throat> there, are, there are some um, amazing individuals who live in our five towns, who um, uh, retired educators, um, other <clears throat> other types of people. I think um, the the Washington Central Friends of Education is another example of um, individuals and groups that have specific areas of of expertise or um, specific areas in which they can really contribute. And I I would love to see those resources tapped. Can I just uh, follow up? If there's, if a board member has any specific re local resources, just send me a quick email. If you don't, you know, I know, uh, and if you let me know uh, by the end of next week, would Friday be good? So I can have a, a list of folks. Would that be helpful? Thank you, Scott. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, a uh, similar comment. Um, I think that the idea of uh, focus groups and interviews are a good way uh, potentially to invite perspectives that you might not otherwise get and with the idea of representation. And so some, some um, <clears throat> groups that you might consider are students of color or other minorities, uh, students that are on an IEP um, or free and reduce, reduce lunch in their families and um, groups like that that might not otherwise if you don't, if you don't invite them specifically. Um, and then one other th thing, I'm sure you're thinking about this, but uh, since we're talking strategy, um, you're going to have to consider, ex or we're going to have to consider external and internal trends. So I don't know how you go about gathering all of that, but um, some analysis of demographics and tax implications and remote learning and non-classroom education and state mandates and things like that, that I figure is going to need to be a, a section of your plan, our plan. Thank you. Diane? So I, I think it's a symptom of the lateness of tonight, but um, do we have a group that's working on this plan or setting up the process or, um, you know, identifying how we're going about doing the strategic plan? Because I think there's, you know, the, um, the CIP process and, uh, you know, information that was gathered while for a different purpose, I think fits with this. I also think there needs to be some um, real intentional ways that we go about doing it so that we're asking um, information of all, as you were saying, Kari, but we also have to be careful to not expect people to represent what we identify their groups to be mm -hmm. and to not uh, require performing poverty in terms of if I'm a representative of free reduced lunch. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm confused as to 
what are the steps we are taking and when is that planning or did I miss it just so because I we, can't. Remember. We don't, uh, as far as I understand and what you had shared with us is that this was just the first share with the board. And that's why we wanted to incorporate this into our first retreat too, because we would need to have set parameters as a board. For for example, one idea it, that we talked with Brian was at that meeting, we will talk about, do we need to hire an external facilitator to make sure that all of this uh, happens? And, you know, and then our team would put together the plan, but so I think that should be part of the retreat. So we have a really rich conversation of what the parameters are. And this gives Brian a guideline of how we will have that conversation at our retreat. So it's that four part retreat. Yeah. And I would just piggyback off that. Thank you, Flora. The uh, having the parameters is gonna be, uh, if we are gonna go down the route of having a, you know, a, a facilitator, a professional facilitator who does strategic planning for a living, you know, uh, that's what they do or ha has done that uh, as a, I don't want to say as a hobby, but uh, they know it, they know at the back, they do it every, they do it a lot. They've done it a lot more than our, we have. Uh, we, we really want to know what the parameters are from the board uh, so we can start setting, identifying what we want. If we have to do it, go out to bid or go see what we need to do. Yeah, and 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 by that, Brian, we don't mean that the the facilitator will write the plan. It's it's more about no, the, no, the no, 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 no. That we get all the of the people, the process, all of the people involved. Yes, okay. it's all about the process, so not the plan. Getting, uh, the plan comes from late. the community. Yeah. Any any other questions from the board so that we can move to the consent agenda and hopefully hit our nine marker? <laughs> okay. So uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of February 17th? I'll move Extend. to approve the minutes of February 17th. Jonas moves a second. Second. Chris seconds. Any discussion, any changes? All those in favor, please raise your hand or do thumbs up. And it seems to be a little easier Aye. to see the screen. I want to. I think everybody is up except any abstain? I see Chrissy doesn't have her hand up. So any abstains? One, okay. All right. Did you get that, Lisa? One abstain? Yeah, yes, thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, and now approve board orders, Lindy. <laughs> Um, I make a motion to approve the board orders in the amount of $221,836.05. Second. Thank you. Second. Diane, seconds. Any discussion or questions on the board orders? All those in favor, please raise your hand or say aye. 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 I don't see any of the, yep, passes unanimously. Is, don't forget to send your email. I will send the email as written. I will hit send the minute that we are done. Uh, approve uh, number seven, approve uh, new teachers. And we have in page 15, we have new teacher nominations. I can make the motion. Can I have a motion? Yep. I'll make Who a motion. That? I, the, Caroline. <laughs> Um, yeah. I make a motion to approve the new teacher nomination for the 2021 school year as recommended by the superintendent. A second. I can make it more specific if it needs. Do, do we need the name of Erica uh, Bryan? You, you could say you could say Erica Moore if you wish. It doesn't. I don't think it'll matter. But um, Erica Moore, okay. school social worker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A second. I'll second. Did I miss? Thank you, Lindy. Lindy. Okay. Any discussion or questions? Everybody had the employee information. No. All those in favor of approving Erica Moore as our next social worker for U32, please say aye. Or aye. Your... Okay. All in favor, it passes unanimously. Okay, public comments. <laughs> I didn't see any others. Am I missing any, Brian? I didn't see any. 
other recommendations. Yep, yeah? okay. Uh, any public comments? Jonathan, do you have your hand up for a reason or that was the past vote? That was the past vote, yes. Okay, thank you. I don't, I don't see any hands up from the public. Okay. So future, any other future agenda, agenda items that you wanna add to our 10 items already? Jonathan, I just want to make. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, is go go ahead, Jonathan. Just something really quickly. Someone uh, brought it to my attention in Berlin that it is the 50th anniversary. I think one of the students mentioned it earlier that it's the 50th anniversary of Youth 32 this year, and so uh, yeah, it was brought to my attention that we we ought to certainly keep that in mind and or do something to commemorate the 50 years of the school. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Is it next school year? Is it this school year? Yes, it is it this school year. Yeah. Okay. Read the chronicle, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's on the chronicle. Yeah. It's an article up tonight. You should go read it. I did see that it was looking for stories. <clears throat> uh, if any of you on the board, if I can interrupt really quick, if any of you went D32 or know anyone who has stories, um, the Chronicle would really appreciate um, having some cool stories from alumni. <clears throat> My father-in-law was the first superintendent. And he built it. <laughs> Can I maybe get in touch with him? Good try. Wow. He's dead. <laughs> okay, Scott, back to order. <laughs> Scott. Uh, thanks, Laura. On 9.7, the Equity Scholar in Residence, I don't know if we'd like to attach a date to that of March 17. I, I think I would wanna ask Brian where we, they are and me, I think they were having a meeting at the school, uh, Brian? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually meeting to find out exactly what the proposal is. Uh, so I will have more information. Uh, maybe we can table that idea until the maybe uh, next Wednesday when we have our agenda meeting. And then uh, we can talk more about it and see if it's, if it's possible to get that up uh, for the uh, following board meeting. Uh, I also do think that at some point I would like to have some sort of uh, presentation about equity supports uh, and what that means. Uh, there, there is some information coming from the state about equity supports and what schools have been identified for equity supports in our district and what that means for our district. I know we did talk a little bit about it earlier this year. Uh, so I think there, there could be some, I, I will have to be sending a letter home to families about it uh, per, uh, per the state. Uh, so uh, there will be some more information. I'm sure folks will be having questions about it once the letter goes out. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Diane, uh, sorry, Lindy? Probably exactly what Diane raised her hand about. Um, the staff appreciation needs to be on the next agenda if it's going to go with an April type recognition. Okay. Great, thank you, Ed highlighted those three. Any other board business before we adjourn uh, or board reflections? Kari? Uh, thanks for getting us done on time. I have a small concern, but um, I'm just a little worried about our voting. And I think it's it feels a little loosey goosey and I think it's just a matter of time until it gets us in trouble. And I'm wondering if, if uh, staff can't develop something that's a little, little bit tighter. Yeah, I, I agree. Harry, what do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, that we're climbing on the screens and we're counting hands that go up and down. So, so maybe there's a way that could be a tally, a, an online tally that everybody votes there and it records. I don't know. It, Scott, do you have a comment about that? We could type in the chat, yes or no. Um, uh, uh, maybe a sort of a uh, sidelong comment. Um, the Callis Select Board for the Callis um, Annual Informational Meeting uh, used, I think, what Kari uses for uh, Hunger Mountains Annual Meeting, the Zoom webinar feature. And it was very interesting. It worked very well, I thought, in that um, all, of the, all of the people who needed to be part of the meeting 
were visible on a single screen and um, there, it, it just it just seemed to it seemed to gel very nicely. There there were no votes, of course, but um, I, I think it might be a lot easier to um, just to keep track if uh, if we had something like that that where where people aren't constantly moving around. You don't feel like you're playing chess with um, video rectangles on the screens. Thank you. Is Stephen Luke? Um, because some people are online and some people are on the phone and some people's internet gets wonky, I, I, I think the simple solution would be doing a roll call vote for votes. It's easy, it's straightforward. Okay. You get to vote and, and then you've got it for every. And if Chris does it by saying yes or no over the phone or someone else, you know, says yes or no or puts a thumbs up, whatever it is, each person is being asked and each person is identifying what their vote is. Then it becomes very clear. If you don't have a vote, you figure out how to get it. That sounds great. That's gonna thumbs take up. a lot longer. That's gonna yeah. add to our, that's gonna add quite a bit of time. It is gonna add time, but it would be to meet Kari's request to tighten up the voting um, because we have people that are online and people that are on phones, um, it, it might be the way we need to go. Okay. We'll, we'll discuss at the agenda planning and for now that seems to be the, the most viable and uh, we'll discuss at the agenda planning. If there's no other business, I would just wanna say thank you again for uh, electing me tonight and I hope to make you proud and I'll work hard. So have a good evening, everybody. And yes, and thank you for making me free. <laughs> you know, we <laughs> talked about that. Yeah. You, you won. He's okay, good. Won. <laughs> okay. Thank night, you, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you. See ya. Thank you.